Hello everyone, my name is Zygmunt, and today is the first in a series of installments on do-it-yourself projects for the SCA and related hobbies. Today we're going to be talking about one of the most important things that you can have in a very commonly used object, the shield. This is a heater shield, so-called because in the 1800s they named it after a heater, also known as an iron. And I'm going to show you how to make one out of a quarter inch plywood, some C-channel, various bits and bobs that I've accumulated over the years to help you make your own hardware in the cheapest way possible. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm switching to a wooden one from my aluminum one. I want to make a little bit lighter shield. That aluminum shield down there that you see is about 11 pounds. And so I've, by making it out of this plywood, I got it one of the big box retail stores. I figure that I can make it quite a bit lighter. It's about 24 by 30 inches. Uh, a pretty typical heater shape and my plan is I'm just going to trace the uh, the outline here on the plywood and then cut inside the line I want to cut inside the line because I've got um, trim protecting the edge against strikes like we're supposed to do plus there's some you know a couple layers of tape here and there and it's a little bit too big so by cutting it on the inside of the line I'm gonna make it closer to its original dimensions and then it'll build out once I put uh, the material on the edges that I'm going to use to guard it. The one big difference is, is I'm not curving this one. This is going to be flat as opposed to my aluminum shield, which is still slightly curved after years of beatings. But uh, I think that's a good trade-off. I really don't care so much about the curve. I, and again, I'm just trying to make this lighter. So we will go from there. One thing I wanted to do with this new shield of mine is to make the edges more symmetrical. Um, this was a hybrid shape that I, uh, a friend of mine cut out from the blank that we had. Uh, my knight has a very much uh, a severe like teardrop shape. Like it, it, it comes in from this corner and then just keeps curving all the way down. It doesn't have any kind of a belly here like you can see on this side and then come in like a lot of heater shields do. And because we were doing it freehand in his basement and he had a, a pair of uh, Beverly Shields shears, it wound up being a little uh, not uniform. It was not uniformly cut, shall we say, and it bugs me. As you can see from there, that's got a nice roll round sweep to it. There's a couple little dings in it, but here's where we really ran into trouble, where you can see right there, there's that kind of just straight line. So what I did is I grabbed some... Uh, we got this actually this is some really heavy stock butcher's paper that um, oddly enough a local university uh, they threw away um, a roll of this paper and it's it's heavy grade stuff that's probably a sixteenth of an inch thick it's like heavy butcher's paper um, but you don't if you know if you don't have access to that kind of lucky scrap you can easily pull apart a plastic um, a paper bag and f I'll fold it out and use it to make patterns with, which I've done in the past for larger projects. Another great uh, resource that you can use to make patterns from, if, in case you like, for say, leg armor, you want to build some uh, leg armor that has overlapping lames, is old manila envelopes that people use in storage cabinets. And you can cut them in half or, or keep them the same, you know, just unfold it and use them at that size. So what I did here is I laid down this edge, which I think this edge is the most uniform of the two. So I laid it down, traced it out, cut out the part that I want, because I'm not going to use that part there. And I'm simply going to line it up here and then draw that in on that edge so my, my edge will be uniform from here on out. So let's say you've done what I did and you laid your shield down and you're going to trace it out, but you want to change something. and a lot of times when you overlap lines like this, you can make mistakes cutting it. So if you want to avoid the mistake of cutting the wrong line, what I'll do is I'll come in here and I'll just put a little tick mark right next to the line that I'm actually going to use. So that way it doesn't get lost in the shuffle and I stay on track, don't really get lost and uh, wind up messing up the cut. It's just one little tip I've learned over the years. I thought I would pass it on to you. So let's continue. So now it's just simply a matter of cutting the shield out of the shape that we already traced. Shield cut 
into a more manageable shape, I'm going to work on cutting it to the interior dimensions and its final shape. Shop that I'm setting up that's uh, inside and so in the future of these to be able to get closer looks of what I'm doing instead of having to watch from a distance but this will have to do for now So, there you have it. Shield blank is all finished. Now I made one mistake. Right here, it got a little bit, got away from me a little bit when I was cutting along that edge. That's all right because the C-channel will make up for that. It'll smooth that out once we put it on. On to the next step. So after laying down my ruler and kind of playing around with how much distance I would think I'd need, I've settled on doing a three inch band all the way around because I figure three inches is going to give me a pretty good amount of coverage down there and if not I can always uh, add more metal later by popping the edge off and, and uh, putting on another piece of metal after I get all, get all the hardware on. That'll be a little bit of a problem because right around in this area is where my uh, my hand grip is going to go and if I had to I could I could drill it and bolt it down through the aluminum. That might not actually be a bad idea anyway, because that way it'll save the wear and tear on the wood. But for now, I'm going to try three inches, and uh, we'll see how that goes. So my estimate was that I was going to need 50 inches, roughly, to completely wrap around that shield. But that was a pretty healthy estimate, and that isn't quite 40, uh, 50 inches. It's about 48 or 49. So I'm just going to... Uh, Cut it there. As you can see, I've already marked the three inch line that I need. And uh, I'll make up the difference on the back end of the shield where I don't, you know, you don't get hit as much. So you, I don't really need it to uh, go all the way to the far edge for blocking purposes. It's much more important that I cover the edge that does all the blocking. And so I'm going to make sure that that is fully covered. And then if it's a little short, I'll just bolt it down through the shield and call it good. Normally what you want to do with this kind of metal is you want to put it on a bending machine and you figure out the measurement you want, you slide it in, use this lever, and it'll just bend it nice and crisp and clean for you. I don't have that option, so I'm just going to bend it over here and hit it with a hammer.
So what I have here is the piece of aluminum that I've cut to reinforce the top of the blocking edge. As you can see, I've marked where my screws are going to go. They are standard quarter inch bolts, as you can see right there. What I do is all of my bolts that I use in all of my shields and other equipments, if it needs a bolt, I use, I standardize the size. So uh, I can just reach in a jar that I keep. This is a really old uh, spice jar that I just keep full of replacement parts for, for when one breaks. So all my straps on my shield, stuff like this, it's all the same size. So I don't have to worry about you know, grabbing the wrong one at the wrong time. So the idea is, uh, this piece of wood that's left over is the same, it's a piece I cut off from my shield. So I'm just going to drill through both sides. Then uh, when that's done, and I've got it all lined up so it's nice and straight, then I'm going to place that over my shield, mark the holes, and then drill through the shield, and it'll all line up and bolt together. So let's get started. Adjective. There we go. All drilled through. And because it does have that size difference, it looks reversed, but that's an F for front. So that way I can't get the sides mixed up. So this is the front, which means it's going to be held like this. So this is the front, which means it's going to be held like this, which means this side has to go on like that. Now, even if this doesn't line up very totally evenly, I'm just going to only be off by a little bit. So I took the liberty of earlier today going through and finding six of these. Three for the front, or three for the, uh, the bottom down here. stuff they used to put in our cartoons back in the day. A little earworm popped in. I'm pretty sure that's from a Bugs Bunny cartoon from way back in the day. A little bit too small. I figured that might happen. So I wasn't 100% sure I grabbed the right drill bit when I did this. It appears that I have not, but I always figured I'd do it smaller just to be sure. And then, because I, I just, it's a lot easier to just go ahead and re drill the hole bigger. You can't go back once you make it too big.
kind of widen it a little bit. I won't go up to the next size. I don't want to make it too big. I don't want to have it slide around in there being sloppy. You know what? I might as well just take this moment. It's the front. It's the front. The blocking edge. And uh, for distance, this piece of aluminum isn't quite 24 inches long. So instead of, I just kind of eyeballed it. They're roughly eight inches apart. Pretty lined up perfectly. So as you can see, nothing works. You see a little white there. There you go. You can see that it made it all the way through. Oh well. It's not maybe not clear on camera, but they all went through. Close enough. want to do I'm going to get the front one and the back one in place when I'm done a little bit of that bolt is ah, hanging off I'll just snap it off and just like that it's all bolted on last thing I'll need to do is snap those little bolts up they are a little bit too tall. But I'll get uh, a pair of vice grips on there and <clears throat> clamp it down and snap it off. Okay, so the next part I wanted to show you was the shield edging. Now, this was an eight foot long piece of aluminum C channel. I'll get you to show you a, a close up of the piece here when I'm done cutting it. But you get it eight foot lengths at, at uh, any of the big box hardware stores. And I got it to protect the, the edge of the shield. It does a, I've used it before and it does a great job. Now, the, the, the pain in the butt of this is you have to cut this by hand. So what I did is you just kind of eyeball it. You, you, you put it in place, you work it around the edge of the shield, and then I have a pair of uh, hammerhead metal cutters that I use to cut triangles in it, and then I very gently put a little bend in it to mimic the bend of the shield. When I get down to the bottom of the shield, obviously I did that. I don't have a perfectly round or triangle, rather, end on this, so this fits in there snugly. So as you can see, and here's the big end, straight end piece here I'm going to chop off. I've already made a mark. I'm just going to cut that off. Now the thing to remember about this aluminum is that it's very strong and it'll bend, but it does not like to be bent back. And as you can see, I was bending this back to adjust it and it snapped off on me and I had to tape, tape a section down a little early. As you can see right, whoops. Hard to do this one-handed. There we go. I had to tape it down a little early and put it in place. Because that is all I'm going to do for, is to tape these down. So once you get it bent, it snaps right over the, the edge of the shield. Just like that. And there you have it. Snapped in place all the way around. And you can see, got a little mark I made down here at the end with the marker right there. And I'm going to use a saw and just cut that flat. And then I'll, uh, I may have to saw a little bit more to trim it off 
to get it so it comes in under here and snaps in flush. I think next time I do it, I'm going to cut this aluminum piece a little smaller. That way this can just snap in all the way along the end of the length of the shield. And I think it'll do a better job of protecting it than this aluminum will. But, you know, live and learn. So there you can see the final cut is going to be really close. It's actually not flexing really well. I need to give that a tiny little bit of a bend more in so it'll fit in snugly. And once I do that, it will fit in a little closer. And then I'll hit it with a file because uh, sanding or cutting it may give it pretty sharp edges there. And I want to knock those off. But that will conclude that part of the construction. So here we have the final results. This is the old hardware mount for my old shield, the aluminum one here that you see. This is where this part goes over my uh, my forearm. This is the part where the basket hilt goes to protect my hand. And here's where I installed it on the new one. It's pretty much just the same exact pattern there. There's I had to make a few adjustments, very slight ones, less than an inch from shield A to shield B in order to get it fit to fit correctly but uh, but it did and pretty much exactly went according to plan um, as you can see that bolt comes in right under the aluminum just barely which is what I wanted because I didn't want to have to fiddle around with drilling through aluminum again um, and the aluminum C channel is right there this piece of tape runs completely front to back and one continuous strip, I double wrapped it. It's to help brace and keep the uh, aluminum C channel firmly in place, which I did all up and down the length of it. It's completely covered in uh, strapping tape and to protect both the edging and people's swords. Um, the aluminum as well is covered. I, uh, in order to make these uh, bolts safe, I used my Dremel tool and a grinding and a, and a, a cutting head and just sheared them straight off. So they're not going anywhere. And they're, as you can see, they're, they're totally smooth. So they're not turning up my thumb. The front, I covered with one of my old shield covers. So it looks more beat up than it really is. But again, you can see where the, the, uh, the C channel runs all the way down the edge. It's pretty, got a pretty distinctive shape. And the new tapes pretty distinctive too so it shows, shows where it's hiding not so easily seen as the aluminum but it's under there as you can see from the other side we're going to make it again i might go ahead and extend another inch or two here for four between four and five inches of coverage just because i do a lot of blocking with this edge um i've used this shield approximately four times now at different practices i took it to adult swim which is the big event they hold annually in Ethelmark. Lots and lots and lots of fighters of fairly high caliber there. And uh, it seems to be holding up well. I don't feel it getting mushy under there, which is, was exactly the point of the C-channel and the aluminum bracing. So uh, for about 20 bucks, you too can make yourself a plywood shield that weighs approximately seven pounds. It's very light and very durable. I hope you enjoyed this video and I uh, look forward to more, including on making swords, making sword tips, and making tea tunics and other pieces of garb. Thanks for watching.